Hello, hello everyone. This is Drist playing Shroud of the Avatar, spiritual successor to Ultima Online. Don't forget to subscribe. There's a link in the bottom of the screen, so click that link. If you like what you're seeing, give me a thumbs up. Appreciate all those I can get. And of course, don't forget to comment in that comment section. I appreciate all the feedbacks I can get. <clears throat> so, we have assembled the pieces of the one lens so now we have all three lenses and our journals say to use each lens it says i reassembled the broken lens at the confluence underneath the pool of destiny so now i just have to use them and i believe talking to these ghosts may be the answer and uh could these possibly be the evard the spirit of evard the guy who wrote the dire prophecy? I don't know. Let's see if I can talk to this guy here. Hello, hello, sir. Hello, speaking the English. <clears throat> uh, do you speak English? I don't understand your Lego lang language. Uh, do you need help? How about a job? Do you have a job? All right. Clearly, there's a barrier, a, a speech barrier there. The end of all things. Tell them, Evard. Show them. Teach them. Make them see. Oh, wow. One of them speaks English. Was I speaking to the wrong one? Maybe. This guy, I think, speaks English. Hello. Do you sp You don't speak English. How do I understand you if uh, before, but I don't understand you now? That makes no sense. Goodbye. Wait a minute, is this a third ghost? I have a third ghost here. How about you? Do you speak in the English? No, he doesn't. Alright, so my other option I think is this podium. Let's talk to this podium again. The podium hums softly. With the three shards now in your possession, you can activate the podium's power to translate your book of dire prophecy. Woohoo! That's what we have to do. So, I, uh, I am talking to the podium, apparently. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to ask it about the books. And it needs... What does it need? All that stuff? Uh, let's give it the three lenses to see if that's good enough for it. <laughs> Don't know what that all is all about. Um, show quest items. Oh, I wonder if uh, I need to give it the page of the book. That's what it is. The page of the book. There we go. That's six pages there. And the three lenses, maybe. That lens. That lens. And another lens. Where's the other lens? This lens. So, uh... That's six, seven, eight, nine items. So, one, two, three, four, five, six... Per, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm missing something there. You know what? I'm just going to give these items... See what happens. Uh, apparently, I wrote a new entry in my journal. Oh, and look, there's a book right in front of us. Woohoo! And now it says the podium is silent, its work is complete. All right. Apparently I'm stuck in that conversation there. And uh, the ghosts are still spouting nonsense over there. So let's uh, read the dire prophecy. Okay, so it took me a bit to figure out what I needed to do here. and. Uh, other than reading the book. It's not just reading the book. You have to understand the book. So that's what I'm going to explain here. So here's the book. 
And uh, before I start reading the book, basically the way it's broken down is you see I have a deceit here, compassion here, valor here. If you remember correctly, each page was uh, two things, either justice and something or other, or narcissism and this, or that, valor and that. And now what this book is telling me is which one of those virtues I fall under. So you want to see where I fall, how bad I am, or how good I am? Here we go, right here. So it says... For the world is falling, falling into chaos. We reached up in anger and shattered the sky. Its blackness falls to earth like a rain of dark glass. The ordered customs and rows of society are shattered. All shall stumble in the blinding light of a blood-red moon. Such as who will not see, deaf to the truth they will not hear, kneeling and wailing of and for themselves, they kill with discordant and untamed shouts the melodic order of their better selves. Yet from the obsidian fall shall rise, seen only by the ordered eye, the blade which shall render honor in their midst. Silence the voices who screech outside the order tune, darken the eyes of unwelcome vision, and bring one vision, one voice, one song to a world reborn in perfect harmony. Supreme and ordered once more in this flawlessness of one thought and purpose, born and die until only the night remains. It shall come to pass in the long days after the fall that there shall come one who comes from beyond the circles of the shattered moon. He shall bind the world together from its shattered stone and bone seas and bind together all that fly above the land, borrow beneath it, and walk with purposeful stride upon its surface. In that day shall all be brought to bow before the power of the One. The world shall be swept clean of its folly, cleansed of its impurity before the One, and the triumph of hope in the darkness shall be complete. For lo, the triumph of hope, the harbinger of the future of the land, the avatar of legend not seen since the fall of the world returns. He brings with him the artifacts of dread, the doom of the world. The heart of sorrow is that which saves all from their agony and their love. The crown of bone steel forged from the might of all who serve. The scepter of dread before which none can stand. The fate of the avatar of legend and the land which he walks. Forever is bound in chains of doom and tethers of hope. These words describe what will be the path of the Avatar. Not off to a good start, am I? <laughs> so now these words will describe my fate moving forward. Deceit. Deceptive to a fault. The Avatar will walk the land. His actions demonstrating the truth is what those who are strong decided to be. The Avatar not shy to unsheath any weapon. His word, least of all. By his actions, the Avatar has demonstrated how honesty is no longer something to be cherished, but a shackle to be broken. The virtue of honesty forsaken, cast aside. It's time in this world done. And apparently I'm compassionate as well. I was deceitful, and yet I'm compassionate, because it says... Through his travels, the Avatar would never ignore any whose path crossed his but showed a level of compassion, heart open to all, selfless in word and in deed, no matter the cost to himself. Though many doubted the dream of an open heart, the Avatar demonstrated that, demonstrated that compassion to everyone, friend, foe, great, small, is one of the great virtues that guide him and its light shines the path before and beyond. Sounding better! And apparently I'm va I have valor too. The Avatar is a shield to all they encounter, and a vengeful sword to those who seek to do harm. No matter the cost, no matter the danger, in the darkest night of battle, at the tip of the spear, the Avatar cries out to follow him. Legends will be retold, myths written, inspirations drawn by countless afraid. In the light of valor burns those who seek to oppose the righteous. So, uh, strike one with the, D D the the first one, and now we're two uh, swings and two home runs so far. But it gets worse. Apparently I'm Malfesis as well. 
the heart cries for justice for a world of order, and the Avatar walks away his path a different one. The law an obstacle, the wealth of others a reward, for it is the way of the strong to take their due from the weak. The only law that holds me, the steel of the iron fist, its justice pure and unyielding, the argument of strength unassailable. The fetters of order cast aside the law of the people broken, the only law that which the Avatar decrees, the virtue of justice forsaken, cast aside, is time in this world done. So, I've, in my world, justice is no longer a thing, apparently. And, uh, apparently I'm narcissism, too? The Avatar's path is long, and the costs are high. Something here remains all... Something here reminds all who may ask. Why should he deny himself of necessity? It's not his path important. Why should he be concerned with the many needs of others? The only consideration if the Avatar is in need. If others can assist no matter the cost they shed. The virtue of sacrifice forsaking casts aside its time in this world done. And moving on. Disgrace. The Avatar is a dagger in the dark. Thrust in the back of those who oppose him, taking not the path of foolish honor. Warfare is not a place for rules or glory, but it means to a goal, an obstacle to overcome. Reason holds the line when Austin fails, and the way to victory tramples more than night. The battlefield is to be shaped and changed, however that is to be done, of no accord as long as it is. The virtue of honor forsaking cast aside is time in this world done. And corporeality? The path of the Avatar walks is long, and there is much to do. There is no time for a fluff, fluff, philosoph, philosophy, <laughs> <laughs> and practical, and man of reason, and of action. The path is obvious, it remains only to follow. Not for the Avatar, the mumbling of sages, or the doting of fools. Others may see patterns in the skies, but it is just the wind, and any who say otherwise are fools. The virtue of spirituality forsaken, cast aside, is time in this world done. So it looks like I'm throwing a lot of these virtues aside. And... Honesty? Or, uh... Through... Though the path of the Avatar has walked the path of glory and renown, the Avatar always humble in word and deed, rarely if ever seeking fame for its own sake. Others may tell his tale, yet the Avatar never boasts for seeks glory. His demeanor a fight servitude, which in and of itself speaks of glory which he will not. And all these other negatives, apparently I'm very humble about it too. So, <laughs> and uh... At the end here it says, For the Avatar in his path throughout has shown the virtues of all a path for all to decide in freedom and chaos. No one shall dictate the path of order, chaos, the true freedom, the lesson of the Avatar's path, and the Avatar's freedom as well. For in the final battle he may take up the blade of order, or he may lay all to waste in the name of darkness. Whichever his path, many will follow him and be inspired. Lo, oh, I tell you, I have seen this. He will decide the fate of the world. Lo, oh, I tell you, I have seen this. I, Evard, the I, I have seen this. I commit this knowledge to they that will follow. That they will prepare the way for Avatar of Chaos, who will forever be known to the ages as Shurtudo. That is me, Avatar of Chaos. So, I'm, I'm, I'm quite the, uh, I'm quite the avatar, aren't I? A uh, mixture of a lot of different things, good and bad, so I'm okay with that. Anyway, moving on. Okay, here we are. We're outside the Oracle uh, Chamber in Central Brittany. About to go in, talk to the Oracle as per our uh, journal entry says. I have returned, Oracle. You have indeed returned, Shakibble. According to my observations, you have assembled the dire prophecy of Mebard successfully and have learned its contents. A book written centuries ago foretold your coming. Have you thought about the reason for this? I have indeed given it some thought, but have not determined what it actually means. Interesting. 
I am sure you have seen much reflected within the book. Yes, I have seen much reflected, and how could Edvard have seen so much? It is a mirror to your actions, seen from the veil of time that conceals the future from the past. One of the things that made Edvard unique was that he saw this concept, time, was not a wall, but a curtain. One that could be lifted, but with great difficulty. At any rate, what conclusion did you draw from this evaluation? I find these virtues to be far too rigid. The world is not a black and white, but shades of gray. I see. You have traveled the paths of the virtue and made your own way. You have seen how those decisions affected those around you and how in many ways they were unable to affect any outcome. You have passed the final test. The shroud is yours. Ah, Black. You are most kind, Oracle, but a shroud? The Shroud of the Avatar, of course. It is a mark of your station, as the Avatar of Chaos and Edward prophesied the coming of long ago. You are but one of many, though. There will be thousands of other Avatars, many of whom have made their own choice. In fact, every Outlander has a potential within them to walk the path and become an Avatar. This is what Edward saw. Edward became disassociated from reality as a result, what you would call insane. He could not comprehend the choices, the paths of thousands at the same decision points. How they would twist and wind around each other? It is challenging for me as well, but it is in fact my primary directive to do so. But what is of more relevance to you is that you are but one of many. There are others who will have this conversation with me. They will not be as respectful of free will as you. Some seek to destroy the world and bring about a new age of darkness. You will have to deal with them. They will be dealt with, Oracle. Ah, I see we have a visitor. My guards are apparently as taken with your charms as the long departed leaves, Lord, my lady. Why, hello, my lady. Who might you be? Quake, you infernal machine. Sure tickle. My name is Arabella. I hope it is not too late. I know not and care not what this thing told you. I know the real lesson you have learned from your time in Novia. I am listening. Your future belongs to you. You and your friends and those you have met along the path. That is what we fight for. That is what is important. Not the cryptic words of long dead sorcerers. No prophecy can control you. You shape what your future holds. You have the greatest gift of all. That of free will. Do not give it up so easily. I know my husband, Lord British, and I can count on you to help lead us all into the future. I am still listening. The next part of your journey lies across the seas. Soon I will hear from my husband and it will be time to rejoin him in Britain. There you will shape your fate and that of this entire land. Until then, continue to help the people of this land as you have been. Wait for my word and beware of the use of the dread artifacts. They will consume your very soul, and that is too high a price to pay for any future. I know you will make the right choice, Shertugal. For now, I must bid you farewell. You have given me much to think on, my lady. Farewell to you as well. Peace be upon you, and stay to the path of the virtues that they not be forsaken, Shertugal. I shall call on you again when the time is right. And there you have it. The Path of the Oracle. And, of course, I've changed into my shroud, which is black, <laughs> like my heart. Or is it like my heart? Maybe I'm an avatar that does not subscribe to extreme ideologies one way or the other. Maybe I'm an avatar that has an open mind. Either way, this has been Drist, playing Shroud of the Avatar, spiritual success at Ultima Online. Don't forget to subscribe, there's a link in the bottom of the screen, so click that link. And of course, if you like what you're seeing, give me a thumbs up. And don't forget that comment section, I greatly appreciate all the comments and feedback I can get there. So, I will see you on our next adventure. <laughs>